Hi everybody, this is my guide to Team Deathmatch on Fringe in Black Ops 3. And to start with, here's a couple of beginning rush routes that you may want to try. First, from the A flag side of the map, run up to the truck and jump on the side, crouching down to avoid long shots from the train hangar, but if you do see some boosts on your minimap, you can stand up and take them out too. The, the other route is more of a camping position, just round to the left onto the grain silo platform, then tuck in behind the corrugated iron to take enemies out as they run from the barn. From the sea side of the map, I really like legging it across the side of the map, and you can usually get to the west entrance of the train hangar just as rushers are, ca are coming out looking to jump into the sniping position in the red barn. Another interesting rush is to jump on the back of the truck, then cover the sniping window in the white building and the two corner positions by the building with the little three on it, and again stay crouched to minimise the chance of your enemies shooting you instead. As far as parts of the map to control when you're not rushing, I really like the corner behind the white building. You can move forward to intercept people flanking along the southern route, and if enemies are pushing through the train hangar, or right up the middle past where the B flag would be, you can move forward to intercept them too. A real power position is behind the blue pickup, where you can get great lines of sight towards the red barn, the people exiting the train hangar and back towards the white building. You can also defend the plumbing building where the B flag would be. You can bob from window to window, but just remember to watch your back. The pickup truck, the hay bales, is a good power point down by the C flag. You can crouch to be hidden from the central B flag area. Uh, you can cover the flanking route to your right, and you can pop up to cover enemies coming from the back of the map or down the middle. I really like this area down near the sea flag. You can catch enemies running from the bridge, people heading up the middle, and people rushing from the white building. And you can also track back into the train hangar to get enemies coming from the A flag area and from round the back behind the red barn. Just keep your ears peeled back. In fact, if you rotate around these positions as the game progresses, depending on the locations of your teammates, where the enemies are, and importantly where they're spawning from, you should be able to gain significant map control in order to get a lot more kills and a lot less deaths. Try and avoid the central section of the map. Snipers really like to get up into the buildings at either end, and you're an easy target. So keep to the flanks, maybe moving through the train hangar or the bottom lane. However, a quick push up the middle of the map, usually best from the C end of the map towards the A end, can be really effective. Just watch out for enemies waiting to your left in the dogleg, slightly to the right of that, and behind the car on the far right, and of course in the window in the building in front of you. When doing this, I tend to push through to the left, towards the water tower and behind it to hopefully flank enemies who are spawning and running out from behind the grain silos. So, now for the meat and potatoes, the main spawn locations across the fringe team deathmatch multiplayer map. The numbers you can see here are where the locations of the common spawn points are, and the number is the approximate percentage of spawns that would happen at that point in a typical game of team deathmatch. So basically, the bigger the number, the more likely someone is going to spawn there. The real hotspots are in the top right hand corner, where one team would spawn at the beginning of the game, and the bottom left on the bridge where the other team would start. And then the top left where you go into the train hangar, and the bottom right around or near the grain silos, and the middle bottom on the flanking route. You'll notice that all the main spawns are around the edge of the map, and roughly at the two opposite ends. Remember, when you die, the game will place you back on the map in the safest place near your teammates, if they're near a safe spawn, and where most of the time no enemies will be too near or have a good line of sight on you. You can use that knowledge to work out the general direction your enemies are coming from as you work your way around the map, as long as you keep a close eye on your minimap every couple of seconds, while also checking the main screen so you don't get caught out and shot by someone. So, as you're moving around the map or trying to control a particular section, look for where your teammates are on the minimap. Then visualize where the common spawn points are, remembering that they're mostly in the corners. Your enemies will be coming from the spawn points further away from where you or your teammates are positioned. Now, 
This sounds easy, but always remember that with the movements in Black Ops 3, enemies can get around the map very, very quickly. So what seems like an obvious situation can be turned on its head very quickly. You need to keep checking those corners, listening out for footsteps, using cover, and don't stay in one place for too long. If you're isolated from your teammates and near the common spawn point locations, be aware that if you lose line of sight, multiple enemies could start spawning in very quickly and overwhelm you. So either maintain that line of sight or carefully but quickly back off, get cover, turn around and be ready for them again. A good practice to try is that when you get killed and spawn in, don't immediately rush off and into the action. Take half a second or so to press the pause button and take a look at the map as a whole and remember that you'll have spawned at the inn at the spawn that is furthest from the enemies and probably near one of your teammates. Then think about what that means about where the enemy team is and then move off towards them appropriately. In an ideal world, your team would only push a half to two thirds of the way up the map towards the enemy home spawn and stay there, taking out the enemies as they rush forward, like you're pinning them in. You don't want your teammates really to rush all the way to the enemy home spawn because then the spawns will flip and chaos will ensue with your enemies behind you or anywhere really. But if this does happen, don't panic. Work your way back towards the majority of your team, preferably towards the edge of the map, then start working around the flanks again towards where the enemies probably will be. If you want to learn more about spawns on Fringe, keep watching after the end of the video and I'll take a few minutes showing you the mini map from a game against bots where you'll see spawns happening live and we can look at why they're happening in particular places. Finally, a word on pre-aiming or the art of knowing where your enemies might be as you move from one part of the map of the other. This is incredibly important, but doesn't mean you need to be running around looking down your sights all the time. Just try to keep your crosshairs centralised over the most likely direction or point an enemy could be as you're moving around. And snap to looking down your barrel when you get into high traffic areas, you know, when you've got to check the corners, go to the cover points and look at the camping spots. I'd also like to put out a big shout to Exclusive Ace, an amazing Call of Duty player and YouTuber who does the most amazing spawn guides. He's the inspiration for a lot of the work I do on YouTube, so please check out the link to his channel in the description below. Okay, so that's enough from me. Please put any questions or comments down below. Hit like if you enjoyed the video and subscribe if you'd like to see more of the same. Thanks for watching and I'll see you again soon. Okay, so what we're looking at here is some very cooperative bots in Team Deathmatch who are running around shooting each other. So let's see if we can uh, watch where they spawn and kind of see what happens. So let's see, right, okay, so let's just take it back a little fraction there. And this guy in the middle here, this red dot, he, he dies now, doesn't he? Bonk, right, he dies. Now, if you see where he spawned, he spawned all the way over here on the left hand side down where I kind of uh, the west hand side of the map so there you can see in action the fact that he died in the middle of the map all his enemies are kind of around the middle none of them have got a line of sight down here but you may well say well why didn't he spawn over on the right hand side well he, did, he spawned over the left hand side because this his teammates are down this end of the map so let's carry on looking and wait for the next one today Okay, so a guy just died there, right in the middle of the map. Now, where do you think he will spawn? This is quite a tricky one, because he's, he died in a similar place to his teammate, so he should spawn somewhere around here, and he has got some teammates down this side of the map. However, what worries me is this guy here, down the bottom, this, this, uh, this, this blue guy. So it kind of says to me that he might spawn... There might be a flip, and he might flip over to the top right hand side near the A flag, or down by the, um, down by where the grain silos are. Because this guy here in the bottom left will have a line of sight down here. So let's just see what happens. Boom! There we go. So we had a we had a bit of a spawn flip there where he split split. Um, <laughs> he's, he spawned right over here. Um, so that, that's a really interesting situation. Now, what you can see now is these guys might then assume everybody's down here. Now, what else also happened now is I think the guy who shot him has died as well. So the question is, where will he spawn from? Because I'm not sure if he'll spawn here on the left-hand side because there's some enemies here. He can't spawn up here because, because somebody just spawned there. But... 
I think probably he could spawn in this area by the grain silos, maybe up here at one of the less common spawns or down here. So let's see where he spawns in. Right, he spawned over here, didn't he? Just then, let's just uh, take that back just to make sure. That's did he? Yeah, he just he he just appeared right there. Yeah, so he just appeared right there, um, uh, right where his mates hope one of the rare respawns. So let's see who dies next. Let's just watch carefully. All right, someone just spawned in over there. Let's wait for the next one. Right, he just died in the middle of the map there, didn't he? So just rock that back a tiny little bit. There we go. So this chap here um, in the plumbing building here is just about to get killed. And... He actually does spawn. We saw him spawn up here on the top right hand side near where the uh, just near where the A flag kind of behind the A flag would be. So why would that be? Well, he can't spawn. He could spawn down here because his teammate is here, isn't he? Um, there is an enemy down this side of the, the map who may well have sort of a line of sight down this way. There's also some enemies there. So it's kind of if you think where's the longest distance next to. Um, his uh, longest distance from an enemy next to his friend is probably this side of the map, isn't it? Or right down here. So let's see where the game chooses to chuck him in. And it chucks him in right up here. So let's go on again. Right, so a guy just died right there. Did he spawn in straight away? Let's just play it slowly. So he dies there. And then, sorry, the red guy dies there and he spawns in right down there because he can't spawn up here because there's an enemy there and he can't, he could spawn down here actually, but because that probably because of that guy, the game's chose not to put him there. We've got various spawns going on. Let's wait for the next blue guy to die. Right, so that blue guy died just there. So where might he spawn? So he's got two teammates here, one teammate down here. Now he's pretty close to some enemy, so he's probably not going to spawn over here. I reckon he's probably going to spawn near to these guys over here, or he could flip all the way down to the bottom hand corner. Bang, bingo. So he spawned with his teammates out of here. So if you were that guy and you were coming off spawn and you looked at your mini map, you would see that you, you could probably just about see the fact you had guys in this direction and guys in this direction. And then there would be a hole here, which again, because you know this is a common spawn point on the bottom right hand side by the grain silos, this is where you could head off to. So you can start to see the power of, of where the spawns are. So if the, and a red guy was going, going to die next, where do you think he would probably spawn? Probably down here in the bottom left hand side, wouldn't he? Because there's this big hole in the map. So let's see what happens when the next red guy dies right bingo so a guy so there, a red guy just died here up here on the top right hand corner and he spawned down here on the bridge so th there we go that's a, a little look at spawns in live uh, as they're working now these are bots so the humans do act a little bit differently. You tend to find bots tend to run, in, run past each other quite regularly. But hopefully this has been a little worthwhile exercise into watching the way spawn to see how they physically flip from one side to the other. And always remember, when you die, you'll spawn in at the safest location that's furthest away from your enemies and probably near a teammate and so as you're running around the map trying to find where people are you know the main spawn locations down on the bridge in the bottom left hand corner up in the top right hand corner and basically in the, the um, top left and the bottom right as well um, as you're running around look for where your teammates are because you know enemies won't be spawning right next to them and then flank around in the different direction okay so i hope this has been helpful if you've got any questions or comments again add them down below if you've enjoyed this um team death batch guide on fringe and would like to see more on some other maps please let me know because um they, it takes a little bit of time to do these videos and uh, this is my first one so if you think it's okay i'd really appreciate it if you if you've uh, you'd say so or if you've got any improvements or changes you'd like to make that would really help too okay that's enough for me thanks for watching and i'll see you again soon